check out this free video and make sure you hit like and subscribe. Gambit here on the chat asks, will there be any payoff to the box storyline? Tony starts a storyline and doesn't know how to progress it. I'm asking because the Bucks attacking Tony went nowhere. Yeah, that one that one wasn't very good. But let me tell you something. I don't know if you know anything about John Moxley. I don't know if you've ever read his book. I don't know if you've ever heard an interview with John Moxley. There is zero chance that he is involved in a storyline that is going to go nowhere. It will go somewhere. That is 100% guaranteed. Could I'm be talking a cliff. 100% guaranteed. <laughs> Could be to the finish there, line. With there is a success. point to this, and, and it will progress. Okay? <laughs> I can't say anything about it. Whatever else, anybody else. He is not. He is not going to uh, just be involved in a nothing happens. So, he's a champion, too, by the way. So if he ain't driving that car, he's at least a uh, shotgun with the uh, directions in hand, then is you, that's what you're uh, that's what you're saying here. Yeti Pod Pie says, I thought the payoff was blood and guts. No, they had a match at blood and guts, but what was the payoff? It was like the story was Jack Perry was too tough to give up. The story was that Tony was gone, and so the young bucks became the number one people in control of the company. Well then like three weeks later, Tony Khan came back, and like they each still had power. And, like, they could overrule each other, but sometimes not. It's never been explained, like, who has power and who doesn't. Why can Chris Daniels say this or the Young Bucks? Like, if Blood and Guts had been a match where the winner of Blood and Guts, they will have power over AW, whether it's Tony's group or whether it's... And no, Chris Daniels is... I mean, it's just... there's no There was no payoff to it. It's like it still is just kind of... Eh, sometimes the Bucks can make a ruling. Sometimes Tony overrules it. Sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes him or Dan. I mean, no, there has not been a payoff to this. We still don't know what happened here. Tony Khan was once fearful for his life. He went out and told the crowd, you know, granted, a little bit of a different situation, but he got his neck put into a, a brace by the Young Bucks and now all of this is happening. There is carnage. There are innocent people being beaten up all over that building. Not one word from Tony Khan. Not one word from Christopher Daniels. You know, these are the things that people will say, oh, you're nitpicking or you're just being a hater. And it's like, no, there's ways to kind of like meld everything in where the thing makes sense. And you can have all of these orbits going on, but like everything's got to actually be connected with some sort of tissue somehow. All right, Michael and Rochester, you're on the air. What's up? Hey, what's up, Brian? Mike, thank you for taking my call. Uh, I just wanted to talk about Wednesday night's uh, AEW show. And one of the problems I have with the company now, I think we have all would agree that it's not nearly the company that it used to be, is that it reminds me a lot of WWE pre-pandemic when they would have all the McMahons were in the ring and Barry Corbin was the GM, and they talked about how we're going to do stuff for the fans because the fans are not happy, and then it was just constant heat, heat, heat afterwards. And I noticed yesterday that every champion AEW right now is a heel, and that's even including Ring of Honor. Everybody is a heel. And I watched the show Wednesday night, and there's maybe 2,000 fans in the building, and it just hit me. Like, the show is depressing. It's not fun to watch. And part of the reason why is because there's nobody to really root for. Like when you watch WWE now with Triple H in charge, there's people to root for. Whether it's Cody Rhodes or Seth Rollins or Jay Uso or Roman Reigns is now a baby face or Rhea Ripley. In AEW, all the baby faces, they just get humiliated. They get treated like trash. Well, hold and... on a second. I want to I thank you very much for the call, but here's the deal. So listen, you, you can't have all good happy news all the time. You gotta have you gotta have some heat here and there. And if you look at what they're doing with AEW, clearly the idea is that we are about to have a whole bunch of baby faces show up, and you will have people to cheer for. Will Ospreay is coming back. Clearly, Kenny Omega is coming back, and obviously they've got this big plan, which will likely start with Darby Allen. I'm sorry, start with uh, Orange Cassidy. And eventually build to Darby Allen. And some one of these baby faces at some point is going to unseat John Moxley. 
Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.